they, you can see it's totally different. You start reading the idea of the Dominion government was not to produce hydropower. They wanted to build not a canal, but they wanted to canalize the North and the, and the regular South Saskatchewan River because the idea was to eventually, yeah, can you show? I think it, yeah. The idea was to have a, a navigable waterway from Grand Rapids up to Edmonton or to Medicine Hat. <coughs> now, okay, here you can see that that tragic that, that uh, has been done already and it took 18 days to go from Grand Rapids to Edmonton or uh, 17 days from Prince Albert to Medicine Hat. Of course, going downstream goes a lot faster. I don't have to, that what took a couple of days. So that was the idea of the government. Yeah. So, and then you have McLean's magazine in 1912, they say, we're gonna go, an article, we're gonna go from Winnipeg to the Rockies by water. That's the idea. Now, why would the Dominion government want to do that? Well, then we have to look over the border, south of the border. The, the American farmers in the Midwest, they had to rely on the railways at the time. And the railway bosses, they all sat, I guess in New York or wherever, you know, it was Chicago. They were in Chicago and they manipulated the freight prices. They would hold cars back so the, the freight rate would go up for the farmers. And the farmers were enraged. They said, why do we depend on the railways? Can't we have, we have the Mississippi. Can't we have ships on the Mississippi and create an alternative to railways? So they can't screw us. That was the idea. And at the time, at the time, finally, because the, the government, at the time, the government in Washington didn't said that that's something we have nothing to do with. But the farmers they lobbied in Washington, and in the end, after several years working on the Mississippi, now you can see they have put dams and locks and everything on. So the farmers in the Midwest, they have an alternative. They can ship their grain by rail, or they can ship it by ship. And the idea, I guess, in Ottawa, they read the American newspapers too. They said, we're gonna avoid this, because we're, the, the railway bosses in Ottawa, they wanted to build railways, make money, and have the farmers truck their grain, and, and of course, like here in PA, the, the wood, truck it by, by, by train. And, but the government said, no, no, we want to have a navigable waterway too. Now it seems all a bit crazy, and we'll get to that. Yeah. So the idea, of course, you know, when you go to Grand Rapids, now there, there is a dam, because you can't get through the Grand Rapids with a ship. But that was the idea, to build a dam at the Grand Rapids, and then the boats could go from Winnipeg to Edmonton. Now, we're not there yet. That's, that was the first idea. The next one, please. If you do that, the, the, the Dominion government was working on another project, building a port at Port Nelson. That was the ultimate idea, ship the grain from Edmonton and maybe also from uh, Medicine Hat, ship it in the end to Port Nelson. Now you know there's the port of Churchill, so that's a totally different story to him. You're ready. So this is in fact the port that the Dominion government wanted to build at Port Nelson. And I gave a couple of notes here. In 1908, they started surveys. In 1909, there was a report. Nobody know yet where they were gonna go. That was the crazy thing. They were gonna go and build a port on Hudson Bay. But was it gonna be Port Nelson or not? They weren't decided yet. And they started to build a railway. The railway was going because, well, it takes a while to get the railway there. So then in 1912, the Dominion government in Ottawa decided, well, we're going to build a port in Nelson. 
and in 1913, so it, this is going fast. It's not like today where it takes 20 years to start building something. <laughs> in 1913, apparently the biggest dredger in the world came to Port Nelson. And lo and behold, the dredger got stuck and they abandoned the dredger. <laughs> That in 1914, there was a whole village built, a camp there, and there's a, a thousand people working. And the railway is not there yet. They're building still the railway. Uh, I remember, you read somewhere, that the chief engineer, he took the train as far as it was going, he got off the train, and he walked to Port Nelson. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember how many days he was on the road. I don't think it was in the middle of the winter at minus 30 or 40. <coughs> so in 1918, they have they had a lot of trouble. Can you get the, the next one? And if, if you go on Google, you can still see what is left. There's still the bridge. Yeah. It's a bridge type like you have here in, in PA. And they have part of the island which is still there. And I read there uh, a, a month or so ago that the, uh, the natives want to build indeed a new port at Port Nelson. I don't think we're getting there yet. Because uh, Churchill is, is in a, was in a better place, but starting again, building a second port on, for environmental reasons, I don't think that, that is ever going to work. But if you look on Google, you will see the railway uh, leaving the, uh, the Pa in, in Manitoba, and it's going northeast. Straight northeast, and I forgot on which place, all of a sudden you see it turns straight north and it goes to Churchill. That's where they were at the moment that they uh, decided to stop with building in, in, uh, in, in uh, for Port Nelson. But the track, the track is gone, but the bedding is still there. And on Google, you can still follow the bedding up to Port Nelson. And I, I, a few years ago, I talked with, with uh, an engineer, an environmental engineer from the government of Manitoba, and apparently once or twice a year, they still fly out to Port Nelson and have a look around there. So, okay, the next one. We, we have to get back to, yes, so here is his idea. The, the idea changed after, after he had uh, drawn that little lock out here. Uh, then the Dominion government wasn't decided just how they, what size of lock they needed. And so they came up with another size, sizing. And then they said, well, maybe uh, Mitchell said, we'll put the lock out here on the power canal next to the powerhouse, which makes sense. The people that run the powerhouse can run the lock if there's a, if there's a bullet. It, it, it makes sense to do that. But then that was going to be too complicated. It's going to be too uh, expensive. In the meantime, we're not talking only for, of uh, Port Nelson. The government in Ottawa was working on other canals. We are, if, you, if we look at from now, that was the end, as they call in the history, the end of the canal building. Unfortunately, they stopped building canals in, in, in England too and in Europe, they, they stopped with that. So one of them was the Georgian Bay Ship Canal, which was now replaced, is now replaced with the St. Lawrence Seaway. At, the, at that time, uh, the Canadians were still afraid of the Americans that they were going to invade, so they didn't want to use the St. Lawrence Seaway. They were going to build their own canal, and I think the canal is finished, and. Well, it, it's, it's used by pleasure craft. And then on the other side here in Alberta, in Alberta they were building uh, already dams on the Bow River. And the, the idea, the difference between Alberta and Saskatchewan is that in Alberta they said, you want to build a, a, a power plant? Come in, you have the money, you start building. In Saskatchewan the government said, no, no, not the government. It was the people said, no, 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 no private enterprise. If we build power plants, produce electricity, it has to be a provincial entity that does it. We all own, and it's still like that. Okay, the next one, please. 
So those, those gentlemen, that uh, company consultants from, uh, uh, from Toronto, they came with another idea. They said, the power canal is too long. That's going to be too expensive. You have to raise the dam total height and have a, sh a shorter power canal. Now, this only happened, and that's not mentioned in, in most, of, most of, of the history, is that here, th this was Mitchell's first uh, proposal. But then, uh, the, the, that was Smith, Kerry, and Chase. They were the consultant, and Mr. Smith was, in fact, the man who looked after the, the project for uh, Prince Albert, for La Cold Falls. And he said, that's not a good place. We should maybe build it here. And they did uh, they sampled the riverbed, and they couldn't find a, a, a good foundation. So he even moved down here. And when they, in, in 1911, when they started uh, doing the, 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 the borings for, for, uh, for in the river, uh, they did a couple of borings here, but then they quickly went over there. It didn't work. They went down. It didn't work. No place to find to build a dam. And the idea that we were going to do the, the, the drilling, the test drilling, was going to take two weeks. But in the end, it took like five months. So we, we keep moving up, and it costs more money. Uh, and he, here you can see what was built now. OK. Mm -hmm. You got your anticipation. <laughs> so here, we, here are we at the, the construction site, how the construction site looks. So, on this side, this is a lower, you, you have here the, the slope, and there is an, an open, almost flat land, which was the work storage site. Then you have the coffer dam, and they started building here what you know what is there now. The idea was, of course, when, when this was fili finished, to open the coffer dam and build another coffer dam on the other side. Now, very interesting, I tried uh, 15 years ago to get some funds from the provincial government to do some archaeological looking, I'm not saying digging, to find the stairs, they must still be there, to find the access ramp that should still be there. But the government said, no, you don't get money because you're not an archaeologist. I wasn't planning to dig. I was just planning as a surveyor to look at the place and say, okay, here is here are steps or here is and have some ar archaeologists later on look at it. It didn't happen. Okay. Yes. So this is one of the many pictures that there are here in the basement. Uh, this is in, uh, in June, taken in June, and you can see the openings. The idea was to leave this open, and when the dam was fully finished, to close that off with stop locks and then concrete behind the stop locks, close the dam. But as long as they were building on the other side, have a cover dam there, they needed the river to keep flowing. So the river would flow underneath, and that's what you see now. Uh, a month, yeah, the following. A month late, oh no, this is, so this is, here you have the lock, here you have what is finished, and this was the part that was still to be built. So, it was sectional. I don't remember the, the exact size. I think it's four meters or something. It, it's so many feet. And then on the other side, they would have openings. They call that stony gates. They would have like a, a, a fixed a fixed part, and in between the two fixed parts, they would have uh, gates that could be opened and lowered. The the lockmaster could walk through the dam. He could get in here or on that side, and he could open by hand, lift those gates up. So in case, like in the spring, when there's too much water, he could go up and lift those gates. Now, they played around with that idea because, what is it, 20, 20 base with 10 stony, with stony sluices. That would be 10 open sluices. But then to save money while they were building on the first part, at some point, there are, there are drawings where there's only six gates. They try to minimize the expense, of course, because the expense was going up. OK. This is a month later from that uh, photo that I showed you. A month later, just before they stopped work, 
And here you can see this is the open part underneath. And here you can see the top that is now existing. So what they did, they always built uh, two, two gates and they left two open. Two gates and, and, and two open. But then finally, just before they finished, because all this stuff went very fast. You got to remember they worked with immigrants that came from Eastern Europe. They were all craftsmen and they knew what they were doing. And the company that was building was Amberson. This is an Amberson dam. And Am the city had taken Ambers, the Amberson company to build this. They knew what they were doing. There, there's a couple of hundred of these kind of dams built in the United States and also in Canada. Uh, I, in, uh, last summer I visited one in, uh, in Alberta. And that's still running. But it doesn't produce electricity. It's just for... Uh, uh, irrigation. Okay. So this is a, a cut, through, cut through the dam. So you can see the water is coming from this side. It would go underneath and run through. There are openings in, in e, on each bay. There's an opening, an equalizing port. Because if some, if one of the gates would get clogged, you will get a difference in pressure and. That would make the, the, the dam collapse. Because this dam is not uh, a solid one thing, like a bunker. It, it, all those pieces are put together and they are, have almost no connection with each other. The, the whole structure works on gravity. It sits there. In, in a sense, if you would blow against it, it would all fall apart. And that did happen. Because one of my problems I had doing my research, I, I had taken a lot of pictures. And I counted 18 bays. And when I looked at the pictures here in the basement, I had 20 bay, uh, gates. So who's wrong? Am I wrong? So I, I must say maybe 10 or 20 times I counted. I had 18, and on the originals was 20. So two bays had disappeared. And I had no proof of that until my daughter-in-law, when I we talked about that, my daughter is. I have been there with my dad took me when I was small in the 70s, and I have pictures. I said, okay, show me those pictures. And she showed me the picture, and there was a picture, and it's now in the book. There is a picture where you can see a piece of concrete sticking out of the river. So I had my proof that I was right, and that there were 20 built, and that two had disappeared. Why they disappeared, I'm not going to talk about that. If you, you got to all buy my book, and then you can read it. Okay, the next one. So, those that have been at, at, at the dam, they know, they know this picture. When you walk around, this is, the, this is the lock, of course, and there you have the dam. Now, you've got to remember, that is, this wall is up to height. And the idea, they stopped working, they still had to finish this wall, and they still had to finish the wall where you, you were standing, if you'd been there. That those walls were not up to height. So it gives kind of the wrong picture. They, they, they quit and everybody left, that was it. Yes. And here is the lock, and you can see, so ships could come in on this side, and then they would open the gates on the, on, the, on the west side, on the upstream side, let water in, the water would rise, and ships would just go over that wall that you see in the back. Yes. So I think the, the most interesting thing is what went wrong, I think. And I, exactly two months ago, I was at the Polytech Institute here, uh, for the students of the business school. And I, I gave the, practically the same speech. And I thought they would be interested in what went wrong. And I guess you want to know that too. <laughs> so the first thing, it, they're not in a particular order. Uh, it, it's like an airplane crash. It's not, it, it, when it goes wrong, it's not one, one thing that went wrong. It's a sequence of events that make the plane crash. And it's the same, it's the same here. So, there was, after, after the collapse of the whole idea, of course, PA said, we have to have an inquiry here. And they did an inquiry. And out of the inquiry came that nobody did any verification, for instance, on the coal that arrived in PA, 
that coal, by the way, had to come from Philadelphia. You know where Philadelphia is? That's on the East Coast. So the coal came from Philadelphia because they needed good quality coal for, for the, the, the power plant that was there to make the concrete. And so what they did, they dumped the coal here in, in wagons and farmers drove the wagons out to La Coal and they dumped it there. But it was checked here, let's say they take a ton, a ton of coal, but nobody checked when the coal arrived in La Coal Falls. Why are you, la why are you laughing? So you understand what I mean? Okay. They did a trip, but nobody found coal on the road, apparently. Nobody would ever do that. Uh, so that, that sequence could have been prevented by putting a railroad from, from PA to La Coal Falls. Then the coal, nobody could get out the coal before it arrived at the Well, but that was going to be expensive too, because we always have to remember that PA had a small budget. Uh, too many cooks spoil the broth. Charles Mitchell. He made his first drawing, and it's, it seemed feasible, it seemed logical, you work in, he was going to work in three steps, logical. But then PA, doing due diligence, okay, and I agree, they get three other uh, engineers in that have worked on the big, on the big uh, uh, projects. They had no problems with budgets, whatever they needed, they got more money, I suppose. So, and then afterwards, when they were doing that, they, PA even called in the engineer Randolph. He was a guy from Chicago, and I don't know if you know a bit about Chicago, but Chicago used, before Mr. Randolph was there, they dumped their sewage in the lake. And Chicago was growing, and then they said, we've got to do something because this is stinking. <laughs> so Mr. Mr. Randolph came on the idea that there was a little river that, gave, that went from, from Chicago eventually to the Mississippi. He said, well, what are we going to do? We're going to turn the river around and we dump our sewage in the river and let it go to, to, to the Mississippi and to New Orleans, of course. So he, he was credited, that, and he was a smart guy at the time, you can't say. He got rid, he got rid of the stink in, in, in Chicago. <laughs> then the problem was the political bitterness at the Dominion level. The Dominion said, you can build a dam, but you need a lock in there. And they said, yeah, what size of lock do you want? Well, we don't know yet. <laughs> so they started discussing, and while...